Always got to do the clap. Also, can we talk about my eyes for a moment? I'm not a beauty guru, okay? I actually don't wear makeup ever, but I like to wear it for videos because I don't know. I just think if you're gonna, you know, sometimes you gotta spice it up a little bit. And I love that I did like this um, green and black look because it's like infection, kind of like the book we're about to talk about. Also, I'm gonna take a moment to adjust my microphone. So let's, let's roll the intro. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things where speak spooky season ends on November 30th. I always want to say November 31st, but it's November 30th. And today we're going to do something that I don't normally do, which is a book review. And I know that most of you asked me to do this book review because you like to hear me rant because I, I like to think that I'm funny, okay? I like to think that I'm a funny gal, you know? like. I don't have a lot of good attributes, but being funny is probably one of them. And it's Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Now, I do want to disclaimer this by saying, in no way am I saying that you suck for reading this book. Like that is not something that I would say. Or am I saying that if you enjoyed this book that you are not a, 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 a I don't know, a good reader or whatever. What I'm saying is that I personally felt this book sucked and I think that it's funny to talk about it. So please don't take this personally. And if you love this book, if this is your favorite book, Honey Boo Boo Child, I appreciate you because this was written by a Latinx author and I don't want to take anything away from that. Remember, this is just for funsies. This is just for the lols. This is just for the vine. I am old. That being said, let's get to talking about Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia without any further disclaimers because you're all smart. You clicked on the video. You know I'm going to shit on this book. So let's get started. So I actually thought, I'm, I was like, I'm going to reread this book and I'm going to tab it and I'm going to, you know, say all of the things that I disagree with or that I think were funny in like a way that was not supposed to be funny. Fungus dick, that kind of stuff. Um, but then I was like, why would I do that to myself? Like, I, I don't do that. So what I decided to do is just do it all from memory. So this book is about a girl named Noemi. Now, Noemi's not like other girls. Don't, don't fall for that shit. Noemi is not like other girls. First of all, she wants to get a master's degree. And in her society, that's not something girls do. Girls just go to college and get married. Duh. So she's not like other girls. She, she's smart. She's intelligent. She, she knows what she wants, kind of, out of her life. And then she kind of doesn't. But anyway, so her dad is like, girl, you're not going to college because, you know, <laughs> of course, of course, it's the times. It's the times. Dads don't want their little girls going to college. They want them married and having babies just like that. Like, look, I'm Latin American. I know that's what my mom wanted. That's what my mom still wants. But anyway, so Noemi gets her dad like her dad's like hey noemi come here and she's like what dad and he's like so your sister catalina not your sister your cousin catalina whose parents died tragically and she has like a really sad life but she is like other girls she's like sweet she's like kind you know she she is important you know but anyway so catalina married this guy now this guy is like some guy she met and like two weeks later boom they were married and it was like crazy but because he has a lot of money everybody was like yeah okay so he married so catalina sends some weird letter to um Noemi's father and she's like they're keeping me hostage get me out of here I'm seeing things in the walls or whatever and Noemi and then her dad is like Noemi you gotta go figure out what the fuck is going on because what we hear is that Catalina's actually sick and she's been like really hallucinating and she probably sent this letter while she was in the throes of her illness which by the way that happens a lot in books like do you like i've had like really bad fevers and the last thing i want to do is write an email although you know hmm there are drunk calls to ex-boyfriends so maybe okay so anyway so no i mean like but dad i don't want to go there you know like <laughs> she doesn't also she has this friend who it, she's leading him on totally she's totally leading him on um but anyway so he dresses up like a horse for her and she just like lets him down because she's like i didn't like the costume in the end but he doesn't matter because he just gets written out of the story anyway 
I don't even remember his name. We're going to call him Horse Guy from now on. So um, so she was out with Horse Guy and she likes to party. You know, she's a party girl. Party girls don't get hurt, don't hurt anything. This review is already a mess and we're six minutes in. The point is, his her dad is like, listen, if you go do the right thing, which is visit your cousin, because, you know, she has to be baited into it because she can't just do it out of the kindness of her heart. He's like, I'll let you go to college and get a master. And, Cata and Catalina and Noemi's like, write me up, write, sign me the fuck up, I'm going there. So she gets there and this is where the book is supposed to get spooky. Um, and here's the thing, she gets to the house and we find out that this is a family of English people. Now, don't even get me started on the whole like colonialism thing, I get it and stuff, but we're just gonna like talk about what's in the book. So they're English people. They actually had like supposedly dirt brought from England here. And it's quite clear from the get go that um, because Catalina is darker skinned and everything, they treat her different. Not Catalina. I keep calling her Catalina. Noemi is darker skinned. They treat her differently. And they're like very eugenics about it. You know, like <laughs> there's some better um, in indigenous people mixing and some not so good. So, you know, like it's all about like the genetics of it and stuff. And apparently Noemi is like the perfect combination because this is where it gets interesting. So her cousins, who is like her sister, she's like all like, oh, I can't see you. I've got tuberculosis. And Noemi being actually a smart girl, she's like, I don't think tuberculosis makes you hallucinate. So she starts getting like weird vibes and this is where the story goes downhill because everybody's like, oh, the atmosphere is so creepy. And I'm like, you have you read any creepy book with a creepy house? Of course, it's creepy, but this is like it's forced creepy. Like everything is just a little bit too creepy, like like. Everything is just like, everything about this house is so creepy. Nobody talks during dinner. And then there is the grandpa or like, yeah, I guess he's not like the dad who is like described in a really like disgusting way. And then we find out he's actually a fungus. We'll get there. But anyway, so Catalina wants to keep her independence. She wants to use the car and she meets the younger brother, her younger cousin-in-law you know, whose name is, I get them confused. His name is Francis, but we're gonna call him Fungus Dick from now on, you know, because that's, we'll get there. So, um, Fungus Dick, um, he, he, he takes a liking to her. He's really nice to her. He, she basically has him wrapped around her little finger and he wants to have sex with her, but that's nothing new because everyone in this book wants to have sex with Noemi like literally everybody in this book wants to have sex with Noemi like in fact there is a part in this book where she's like having hallucinations because apparently look I'm gonna split there's like there's there's this mold there's this fungus going on and it's like the spores are on the walls and that's why they had um like earth brought over from England so that the mother like the great grandmother or some shit could keep them alive and what they do is like they transfer their souls into younger people and only men can do it because you know men and all that you know stuff and then and, and then and and like so so noemi starts experiencing really weird hallucinations and of course in one of these hallucinations the older brother the one that's married to her cousin um like molests her because can we have a ghost story without a ghost molesting a virginal girl? Hell no, of course not. Of course, why, why would we? So anyway, so he molests her like a few times throughout the book. There's a part where she like looks at the, at the wall and she's like, I think I see faces in the wall. And then she licks the wall. Is this the weird, creepy atmosphere that you all were like, oh my God, it's so good. I'm like, she's literally licking a wall. She's like, oh. well, I guess that is kind of creepy though. But anyway, so she goes to like, she, she tries to keep her independence and, and, and Fungus Dick is all like, yeah, totally Catalina, we can do this. And they only speak English because the, you know, English bad, Spanish good. And, um, 
she goes to town and she finds a doctor who takes her to like a lady that gives her some medication to fight off this fungus but then it makes her like it, it makes Catalina convulse you know and none of this is really explained and also those two characters like the characters in town like the 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 the, the lady that gives her the medication and the doctor just like disappear by the end you know and okay so Catalina's kind of fallen for fungus dick and fungus dick is all the time talking about mushrooms and how mushroom ref like how mushrooms look like penises that was not he literally says that in the book and he's all like Catalina not Catalina I keep saying Catalina Noemi you have you ever noticed how mushrooms look like penises they're so phallic and Noemi's like what exactly 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 Noemi what but she goes along with it and she starts to like him but then there's this weird part okay so we, shit happens she gets molested by ghosts and um and then there's this weird part where the the the, the elder ghost lady <laughs> like the one that they keep in the basement that's got fungus growing all over her uh, whatever <laughs> She's always like, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I don't know why that matters. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, in the end, they're, like, fighting evil fungus lady and evil fungus guy. And um, her cousin's husband is trying to have sex with her. And, and, remember, like, he molested her. And she knows he molested her. Like, they're, it's really clear that it wasn't a dream. Like, it, like, they make it super clear that it was, like, him. And then at one point, she's with Fungus Dick, and then she's also with um, him. And he's like, it's me that you really want because you like danger. And she actually thinks about it. Like, remember, this guy molested her twice. And she's like, hmm, maybe. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, no, no, girl, you don't go with him. Also, you kind of don't go with Fungus Dick because in the end, Fungus Dick has always been there, you know, keeping your cousin hostage. And also, he never really straight up tells Catalina, like, listen, some shit's going on. There's a cultish shit here. No, he doesn't do that. You know what he does? He makes Fungus Dick references. He's all like, have you ever noticed that mushrooms are phallic? Have I ever told you about mushroom spores? And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, and he's all like, I tried to tell you. No, you didn't, bitch. What you do? And because um, there's a the thing. They don't speak Spanish in the house because nobody speaks Spanish. So he only speaks Spanish to her. And it turns out they've been poisoning her with the food, with the spores, which doesn't really make sense. So are the spores on the wall or are they on the food? I don't know. But the point is, this turns into a straight up Call of Cthulhu shit. And in the end, okay, so what happens in the end? So um, they save Catalina. They, she repeats the whole open your eyes thing to the fungus lady that is in the basement. And it turns out that Fungus Dick can't leave the house because he is like kind of addicted to the spores. But for some reason, he can later. Oh, yeah, you know, that's the thing she ends up with fungus dick remember the guy that helped keep her like cousin hostage and they like drugged her and whose brother like molested her she's like yeah we're together now girl if i was catalina i would have been like listen up bitch you don't get to live happily ever after and walk into the sunset with fungus dick here who helped these people keep me hostage and were using me in some weird satanic ritual and that's how the book ends so the whole building of like colonization and trying the like rape of latin america or mexico in this case and by by um these people that think that they're better than us okay i got that and then in the end what happens she ends up with one of them. So all of that, like, that's what happened to it because Fungus Dick was really nice. So I guess that there's some nice colonizers. That's, that's, that's what I got from this book. Um, I, I really didn't like it, <laughs> clearly. Um, this is 
is just basically what happens. Girl uh, goes into haunted house. Haunted house tries to kill her. Girls get out of haunted house. She forgives boy that was in haunted house and kind of participated in all of this shit. But he was actually nice because he's a nice guy. And also like his characterization. I'm talking about fungus dick now. Fungus dick is like like sickly and like not right in the head. I don't know. Whatever. And then... um. The other one, uh, Big Dick, we're going to call him Big Dick, uh, Big Brother Dick, um, he is like so stunning and strong and, and you know, there's this like whole nice guy characterization, which I really didn't like because it's like, yeah, he's nice, but he also kept your cousin hostage. Like, what the fuck are you doing, girl? And that's how the book ends. And I really didn't like it. I also just didn't like the atmosphere. I didn't think there was anything spooky or scary or anything about it. All I thought, all I saw was you trying to describe spores to me continuously. And I just, if you want a book that describes the like life of spores, you know, just read like life of spores, life of funguses and stuff like that. And I just didn't, maybe I'm stupid and somebody can explain it in the comments, but I just didn't understand the whole like, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, like open your eyes bit. Like when the, when the mother fungus lady was all like, open your eyes. And also why was she say, I, I know she was mad at the family because she like tried to kill them, but then it didn't work. And like, they keep her alive. Also, why would you keep an entity alive that is constantly trying to kill you? I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna like hail Mary to something, wouldn't you not do it with something that tried to kill you? Like, wouldn't you want something on your side? And again, there are so many loose ends in this book and it's like, what, what the fuck, you know? And just the fact that she ends up with fungus dick, I just can't, I can't, I can't. Like, girl, this guy had your cousin captive and she was trying to get out and then they got out. And I, I like how it was very convenient that he gets out of the house, even though it's been established that he can't get out of the house. So I just, that's it. This is why I don't review books. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, like I said, this is all hyperbolic. If you like the book, I'm really happy for you. And if um, and, and, and again, I'm not shitting on the author. I just think that the execution of this book was not to my liking. And honestly, my biggest gripe with it was the whole, I really don't like it when virginal women are used as pawns for ghost fucking if you know what I mean. And I, I just don't, I, I didn't like Noemi as a heroine because I, even though I found her kind of feisty and she, she did like do things in the end, she was just another pawn in this the whole thing because she doesn't really do anything. When she finds out shit's going down, she, she just follows fungus dick around basically. And and yeah, girl, the second I see my cousin, like, like they don't let me see her or whatever, I'm calling the cops on these people. Like, what the fuck, you know? I, and I know that in that case, there would be no story, but I think that the author should have looked for a way around that, that I, I personally didn't find satis satisfactory. There we go. It wasn't to my satisfaction. So, and, and the ending, I think the ending was really what uh, sealed the fungus deal for me. Uh, why does she stay with the fungus dick guy? What was his name? Francis? I know there's Francis and Virgil and I kept getting them confused. I think Francis is fungus dick and Virgil is big brother dick. I don't know. They're all dicks anyway. And, and you know, and again, the fact that everybody in this story wants to have sex with the main character, like she's just so perfect that the dad wants her, the brother wants her, the other brother wants her, you know, and of course grandma kind of, grandma wants her because why didn't Catalina, why wasn't she able to do the things that Noemi does? Is it because she's sweet and nice and Noemi is not like other girls? Is that it? Like, is that the thing? And they, and then I think the, the book does make a really good case for like, um, 
uh, we only appreciate women of color when they are to our standard of beauty. I that part I think was really interesting, but um, that doesn't mean that everybody wants to have sex with your main character. Anyway, <laughs> that's my rant review of Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I I I really disliked the fact that this that like. I didn't like this book because I wanted to like this book because it was written by a Lat Latina author. Well, Latina. I, I think she, she identifies as a woman, so the Latina author. And I want more authors to dare to write this. And this is not me not appreciating her effort. This is just me not liking this particular book of hers. I will still pick up more books from her. I just didn't think this one was well written. And one of the things that I wanted to touch on is that it's okay not to like things written by BIPOC authors. It's okay to express your opinion. It's okay to say, hey, you, this was a good try, but I, it, I didn't like it because I don't, you know, it was hard for me to make this review because I'm also Latina, so I feel like I'm kind of like going against everything that I shouldn't like, like that I should just automatically love this book because it was written by a Latin author. But I want you to know that you don't have to do that. You know, you can have an opinion that is different from what you're, you know, that, that is not good. You can have a bad opinion of a book. What I don't think you should do is trash the author or write the author off right away or write off all Latin authors because you read one book that you didn't like by a Latin, Latina author. You know, um, I'm going to keep reading Latina authors. I'm going to keep written. I'm going to keep written Silvia Moreno Garcia. I've heard that her other book, which is Gods of Jade and Shadow, is really, really good. So... I might pick that up, you know, it, what I'm trying to say is shit on the book, not on the writer, shit on the book, not on the reader. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that you understand that this was all for fun and it's all hyperbolic. There are parts of the book that I liked, but you know, fungistic. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You asked for it and here it is. I. I, I don't know if it was satisfactory enough for you. That was not the correct word, but I don't care. And I'm just going to go and film another video. So without any further ado, um, I bid you adieu. And I remind you that I do post uh, three times per week. My schedule is a little crazy right now. So if you don't get a video from me on Monday, you'll get it on Tuesday. We're working on it. I just don't want to change my banner. So for now, it's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But we'll see how that evolves because I work now on the weekend. So, so as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye. And stay away from Fungus Dick. <laughs>